Well, I guess it's finally time for a little update on the Caterpillar generator set. This is the uh, 1939 66 kilowatt generator set built by Caterpillar with the D13000 engine and the General Electric generator end. So, it's been a while since I made any kind of video or, uh, you know, any update on this thing. Haven't really done too much with it. Uh, you notice I've got a little bit of a little bit of a tarp shanty built around it. The tarp is temporary, but the structure is permanent. And this is what I've made with those structural pipe fittings, which I pointed out in a uh, previous video some months ago. Actually, it was probably a year ago now. But uh, I, I built the structure. It's, uh, it's just a basic kind of A-frame, uh, you know, building over the uh, generator. And what I want to do uh, as a permanent roof is I've got some corrugated uh, tin, corrugated roofing material. I just picked this up recently, actually. Some of this stuff here. It's relatively inexpensive, and it's not very heavy. It's, uh, it's steel, but it is galvanized. So then there's a ridge cap for it here. Now, of course, I can't install this roofing material yet because I... I need to use the chain hoist and the gantry to reinstall the radiator and the cylinder heads. So the tarp is temporary until I get that done. The, the structure itself will be easy to take apart if I need to. It's really just held together with set screws and those pipe fittings. So, but on the generator itself, there's not all that much progress on it. Just keep everything covered up here. There's not much to see under there. I do have the uh, the two bad liners out of it, and so they're out and removed. I'm not going to show you anything because you probably not be able to see anyway. But here are the two liners. I uh, forget which is which now. I believe this here was number four, and this was number three. So this is these were the two offending liners that had to come out. Nothing really much done to the generator either. I have some tarp sidewalls that I put on, on this thing, so it really is pretty much enclosed for the most part. So here's a little close look at the liners. This is the uh, the uh, head gasket side and the uh, crankcase side down here. So these are the two that were bad. This one you know, doesn't look all that bad up here. But there is quite a bit of pitting down the bottom. So these seal with two O-rings down at the bottom. Here's one of the originals. And a uh, copper spacer or shim up at the top here. The uh, height or the protrusion of this surface above the deck is not adjustable on these engines, or at least I don't believe it is. In reading the uh, the service book, it didn't seem to indicate anything. And when I ordered the new liners with the new seals at the bottom, there was only one part available for the uh, seal up top, so you wouldn't adjust the protrusion by adding or removing shims in the case. And I don't think you you, you have to you know have a counterboard device to either sink down or raise up the uh, the counter bore in the head. So here's the other one. So let's go and take a look at the cylinder heads. That's what I'm going to start working on uh, in the next couple days, I imagine. So hang on. Let's take a walk inside here. So here are the heads. They've been degreased for the most part which was uh, quite an operation. They still need some cleanup, obviously. This is, uh, let's see. This is going to be one, two, and three. So cylinder one, two, and three, and that is uh, four, five, and six right there. See, number four was obviously the one that got the water in it, uh, along with number three on that head. So... 
The exhaust valve seat shows a lot of pitting. I haven't even started to clean it up yet. Like I said, I just degreased the whole thing. But the rest of it looks okay. The valve seats look fine. I'll show you the valve out of this one. This is um, number four is exhaust valve. You know, the valve's lined up, ready for cleaning. So this is number four exhaust right here. Take a look at that pitting there, it's pretty bad. The cylinder was completely filled up with water at one point and stayed that way for quite a while. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to clean this up and reuse this valve. We'll, uh, we'll keep you updated on that. Let's take a look at number three's exhaust valve. That was another one that, uh, that was the other cylinder that got the water in it. So that's this one here. I didn't even wire wheel this one yet, but not as bad. Oops, sorry. This will definitely be repairable or serviceable. Some pitting there. So, kind of held up taking care of those valves. My, uh, my larger valve grinder here needs a little bit of help. I, I haven't really ever used this, but maybe once or twice since I've owned it. And the belts here, the leather flat belt for the main motor drive, and the little round leather belt for the, um, you know, valve spindle, it's pretty much just shot. So I'm going to order some new belt material from McMaster Car and kind of go through this thing and lubricate the motor and clean it all up just so I can use it. This is a neat little machine. It almost has a, a, a drill chuck of sorts here instead of separate collets like my other little baby valve grinder has. So once I get this all running, I'll, uh, I'll show you. So that's about it. The pistons and everything are still in the back shop there. I haven't really done anything with them yet. So I really want to concentrate on the cylinder heads and um, cleaning out the water jacket, the crank, the block and everything like that to be able to reinstall the uh, uh, the two new liners that I have. Uh, these are original OEM cat liners. So I want to reinstall those and uh, pull the rest of the pistons out. Let's go take a look at those pistons. These are the three and four here. So this is number four, this is number three. These are the two that were stuck. You've seen these before. But I do have new liners for those two right here, along with this here, which is all the new rings and seals. What is that? That's the fuel filter housing gasket. Just a lot of random gaskets and things like that in here. So, like I said, right here is just rings and liner seals for the two pistons that are out. I'm going to pull all the rest of the pistons out and re-ring them and deglaze the cylinders before anything uh, goes back together. So once I get these two cleaned up and reinstalled, I'll pull the rest of them and uh, re-ring them and clean them out and reinstall them. So hopefully that kind of materializes this winter. I was hoping it was going to happen during this past summer, but that really didn't wasn't a possibility. Just much too busy with work and everything else to uh, get a chance to work on it. So, so long for now, and stand by, there's more videos coming.